All right. We're going to look at this problem, problem 2.2. It's very similar to the one we went over in the lecture, example 2.1. There are two point charges uh, on the x-axis. One of them is, in this case, negative q at x equals plus d over 2. The other one is positive q. And our goal is to find the electric field function uh, for any point on the z-axis, OK? So now let me, this is problem 2.2 and x-axis, z-axis. This is charge negative q. And again, this is at x equals plus d over 2. And there's another one that's positive q. And this is x equals negative d over 2. <clears throat> and point p here. So um, formally, using superposition, what we can write is electric field as a function of position is sum of, in this case, there are two charges, I one to two, and then I have one over four pi epsilon naught, QI over script RI square, RI hat, okay? So now I, I have two, okay, if, if I ch call this uh, charge number one, and this one charge number two, I one and two, right? Um, so this is going to be my script R I vector, R one vector. And this will be my script R two vector, right? So uh, if I write this explicitly, one over four pi epsilon naught, okay? And then I have Q1 script R1 squared R1 hat plus Q2 script R2 squared script R2 hat. Okay. So here's an interesting thing we can do. Uh, it's very neat, actually. We can solve this, you know. In the solution to pro uh, example preceding this problem, um, we are defining the angle theta and then doing some trigonometry. But you can also do the same thing in a different way, just doing essentially vector algebra. Um, let's do that. Well, first thing we noticed, what is R i hat? OK. We went over this in the last lecture. It's basically our script R vector divided by script R magnitude, right? That's by definition that. So I can replace these unit vectors by this, okay? So I can write script R one hat as script R vector divided R one script R one magnitude. And the, for the second charge, script R2 divided by script R2 magnitude. So when I do that, so it's, um, I think you can follow easily. You would be one over four pi epsilon naught, Q1 script R1 vector divided by script R1 cube because there's already squared, there's one more coming in, plus Q2 script R2 vector divided by R2 cube, okay? So now here, um, Q1 is negative Q, Q2 is positive Q. Now let's determine um, script R1. Now, what we need to do 
we find the difference between two position vectors. Position vector for the field point, which is point P here, and position vector for the source points. And we have two of them. One of them is x plus d2. The other one is x minus d2. So now look at, look at their coordinates. So this one is 0, 0, z, right? z is variable, any position on the z-axis. For q1, this position is d over 2, 0, 0. And for q2, this coordinate is minus d over 2, 0, 0, right? So that means I know the uh, field point. Field point is my r vector, which is um, essentially z, z hat in this case. And I need to write r prime, r, r1 prime, which is the first one's position. It's going to be d over 2 x hat, right? And similarly, r2 prime is minus d over 2 x hat, okay? So using these, I can write the separation vectors, right? So R1 separation vector, script R1 is R minus R prime one. So these are sources, right? And from that, what I can write is, okay, script R1 then is this D over two X hat. Oh, I'm sorry, Z, Z hat, okay, minus, d over 2 x hat. OK, that's the first one. The second one here is um, script R2 is the field position where we, you would put the test charge, for example, point P, minus R2 prime vector. OK, and let's do that. And script R2 then is, again, z, z hat minus, now I have minus d over 2 x hat. So minus minus will become plus. So script R2 will be z, z hat plus d over 2 x hat. All right. So now what I need to do is, okay, replace Q1 with negative Q, replace Q2 with positive Q, and replace script R1 with this vector that I found here, and script R2 with this vector that I found here, okay? All right, let's move on. So, the electric field becomes one over four pi epsilon naught. Instead of Q1, I'm gonna put negative Q. Instead of script R1, I'm gonna put Z, Z hat minus D over two X hat. And I'm gonna divide that by magnitude of script R1 cubed. Well, that's easy, z squared plus d squared over 4. And so if you take the square root right there and then raise to power 3, you would have z squared plus d squared over 4, 3 halves. Plus, now, q2, that's positive q, and then script r2, z, z hat plus d over 2 x hat. And divided by, same thing here, the magnitude doesn't change, z squared plus d squared over four, raised to the three halves, right? So now, I mean, q is common. There is negative sign here. Denominators are common. So I can do a little bit of factoring and then 
add these. Okay, and then the, this negative sign can be distributed. So I would have one over four pi epsilon naught Q divided by Z squared plus D squared over four raised to the power three halves. Now, minus makes this minus Z, Z hat. This minus makes this plus D over two X hat. And then here I have plus Z, Z hat plus D over two X hat. All right, you can easily see minus Z, Z hat plus Z, Z hat, they cancel. All right, D over two, D over two makes D X hat. So it becomes one over four pi epsilon naught Q over Q times D, Q times D over Z squared plus D squared over four, three halves X hat. Okay, so that's about it. We're done, right? So what we showed is that Z hat components cancel out. It's perfectly in the X direction. And does that match our expectation? The fact that there is no Z component? Well, let's show that. This is negative charge. So at point P, we have electric field definitely pointing toward the negative charge. And this is a positive charge, plus Q, minus Q. And the electric field is pointing away from the positive charge. Right, let me push that a little bit. Sorry. All right, this is my X axis. This is my Z axis, minus Q here, plus Q here, equal distances. So, so now what happens is, if you look at the components, the X components, the components parallel to the X axis, they are pointing in the same direction, but the Z components in this case are in the opposite direction. They need to cancel out. And, but we didn't use any trigonometry here, right? We just used the definition of vector definition of the script R separation vector in terms of the um, field position and the source positions. And that's how we figured this out. All right, I hope you enjoyed this solution.